on. Hi, and welcome back to Dirtbag Baseball Talk, everybody. Kirk, along with a really special guest, a gentleman that I met uh, probably tw 2016 uh, the first time. And then uh, when my co my uh, kids were over uh, playing with them and, and coaching and different things like that in 2017 as well. So all the way from uh, La Rochelle, France, my guest today is Theo Lacmesh. Theo, welcome to the show. Hey, hi, Kirk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the opportunity, and uh, I would I would uh, say hey bonjour <laughs> to uh, all of your uh, people from Quebec, you know, and uh, all of the people who speak French around uh, Canada. Love it, love it, Dale, for sure. And uh, and 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 dirt bags, uh, as you can hear, a little bit of fun and stuff like that. So I, I appreciate uh, Teo being uh, having that uh, bilingual and and very fluent. And and but another reason why uh, I always gravitated to Teo was his just pure passion and love for this amazing game of baseball. And and I mean that truly. It's unbelievable his passion and, and desire. Um, obviously, Teo, you're a catcher. Um, tools of ignorance as they say and uh but it's a it's a position that you've uh, loved playing and and so let's talk about growing up in france and playing because I, i'm sure most of the world doesn't even realize europe and that they they kind of know that there's baseball over there but they think you know it's probably back in the 1940s and they play on a field that's thrown together and a bunch of burlap sack for bases and and it's really not like that at all it, it's amazing the development and uh so talk about a little bit of your history growing up in the game of baseball in france yeah so i think as a french guy in french it's kind of uh weird to play baseball, you know, because here the national sport is soccer or maybe rugby. But um, in fact, uh, the city where I grew up, uh, there is a strong baseball club, you know, uh, all the um, all the, um, the club, the baseball team, they want to promote uh, kids and they're really focused on getting uh, kids playing. So I start in a small. I start playing baseball in a small city, which is called Thiers. It's in the suburb of Paris, and like at every practice, we had maybe three, four, sometimes five coach just for one team. So you know, in France, maybe in Canada or in the US, it's kind of common, but in France, it's really, really rare. It's really unique, and uh, I think this helped me to to get better and to love the game and stuff like this. So when I, I start when I was 10 and quickly I realized that I really enjoy and love baseball and I wanted to, to have a, to go to maybe another level. So when I was 15, uh, I went to some academy during four years. So during those four years, I was uh, practicing in the morning going to school on the afternoon and again practicing on nights. So right now in France, we have four of, of those academies and this really helps a player to get better, you know? Yeah. And since I was a kid and I realized that I love the game, I always uh, had this hope to play at the highest level I could. So unfortunately, after high school, I wouldn't be able to go to junior college. But, you know, the passion for the game stay in my mind. Uh, for the university, I had to go to study in Spain. Um, it's kind of a long story, but in France, it's really hard to be a physical therapist. And this was my uh, desire. So I had to go to Spain, study there, and after get back to France to work as a physical therapist. So I studied four years in, in Spain, in Madrid. Uh, and after when I came back, I, I still have this strong uh, desire to play at the higher level. So I trained very hard during, a win during one winter. I put myself on the baseball job overseas uh, website. And during the 2018 season, I sent... I, I don't I don't know maybe 100 mails around the world uh, to say to some teams hey I'm here I want to play baseball just give me my opportunity 
And uh, uh, unfor uh, fortunately, there is one team in Australia. No, actually, there is two teams, but one team, they, they, they answer me and they propose me something decent, you know, like a flight, accommodation with a teammate and the opportunity to play. So I went to Adelaide in Australia on October 2018, yeah. you know. And so that's how I start playing overseas. I play for them one season and uh, hopefully this was a hell of a season for me. <laughs> like I, I play, I play free, uh, free in my mind. And I had a really good season over there. So when I was there, uh, there is some team in Czech, Czech Republic, uh, sending me some message and asking me if I, I wanted to play with them. <clears throat> At this time, I knew there were some good level in Czech Republic, but I didn't knew exactly uh, what I was supposed to expect, you know, about the level. So after Australia, I went there in Czech Republic, and man, Austra France was here, Australia was maybe a little bit uh, up on the level, and Czech Republic, it was here. We, it was a really, really good experience on on the on, on baseball, we had like three games a week. Uh, all games were on almost all, all of the game were on nights. So we play like Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday afternoon. So it was a it was a really great experience. We play maybe I think they play they kind of play sometimes between forty and fifty games in yeah in one summer. So. It's it's a really really good uh, good season and good uh, way to, I think way to play and develop players and also I think when you look at the Czech Republic the national team uh, you can see on the last maybe five six seven year uh, they made a, a big improvement and I think they finish maybe three or four on the last European championship championship against the uh, Netherlands, Italia, Israel. So they also beat Israel, I think, on the uh, two years ago during the Olympic qualifiers. So they are they are really good. They are really good. For sure. And For sure. uh -huh. yep. just just after the Czech Republic uh, the there is another team uh, sending me message uh, for you know winter ball. Yeah, because at this time I couldn't uh, get back to Australia, because Australia it's a um, it's a kind of uh, difficult to get back after one year. So generally, you can you can go to Australia with a working holiday visa, and this uh, wor works just for one year. On the second year, uh, you if you want to get back more than three months, you have to get a sport visa. A sport visa uh, internal team they they don't want to pay apply for sport visa because it's it costs them way much more money sure sure so i i, I would uh, at this time i wanted to get back to australia but i couldn't so there is one team in argentina uh, sending me uh, some message and asking me if i wanted to play with them uh, there the season is it's just three months. So I, I went there on September until December. And uh, yeah, it, it was good experience. I would say more on the human level, you know, social sure. people and stuff. And it was, it was really good. It, it allows me to accomplish one of my dream, childhood dream. When I was a kid, I saw some, some movie. And uh, the movie takes place on the Iguazu Falls. Yeah. So going to play in Argentina, I had the opportunity to accomplish, you know, my, my childhood dream was to, to, to get to the Iguazu Falls. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah and, and, and it, fantastic story for sure. And thanks for sharing it because it's, it's so important. I think we get so wrapped up in our own minds, whether we're in the, in the U S and Canada, especially in this part of the world and stuff that 
baseball really just exists in North America type of stuff. Obviously, we realize Central America, the Dominican, all that type of stuff and things like that. But we never think about the Australia's, the Europe's and stuff like that. So, so it was incredibly important for you to share that coolness uh-huh. and, and and the fact that you can experience that and you did mention a, a company by the name of baseball overseas which happens to be run by a, a canadian patriot and he's out of switzerland now i believe uh, david burns and stuff like that but you uh-huh. know for for i guess players that have p- finished college uh playing college over here in north america i would think you would say that would be a pretty highly recommended website to be be on and join and get uh-huh. to be able to go around and experience those uh I'll just get baseball experiences like you had, Tail. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I, I think actually, I think this website is, is a, I wouldn't say magic, but it's a fantastic way to be able to travel around the world playing baseball, you know. And since I started uh, my baseball trip around the world, there is a lot of people asking me, hey, I want to, I want to go to play there. How did you do it? How you manage it and stuff? And I always uh, answering them, hey, go, uh, go on the Baseball Job Overseas website, put yourself, put your stats, your photo, video and stuff. And uh, you will see, you yeah. will see. And uh, some of my friends, they, they did it and they really enjoy it, you know? Yeah, for sure. It is. It is. It's fantastic. I mean, Dirtbags, I did it way back in 1993 when I was done... Um, college and and i actually went to a place where i met uh teo and the rest of them uh, a guy by the name of guillaume cost and uh philippe denis was uh the boss at that time and it's a uh, 70 sororge just outside of a, a subdivision of uh paris if you want to think of it that uh-huh. way and it's amazing it, it was it was i still get the shakes and i know nolan and Braden do too or whatever and that like to be playing baseball, but yet to be able to get on a train like you were saying, Teo, and and for you, I realize it's your backyard, it's where you grew up or whatever, but for us to be able to go, you know, geez, I'm down to Notre Dame, I'm down on the CN, I'm down on, you know, in Paris, it's, it's unbelievable the experiences that you can have because of this game of baseball. Because of this game of baseball. Now, you're sitting there going, you're on in La Rochelle, it's, uh-huh. it's off the coast of the water. West, West coast, o- yeah. ocean, ocean coast, yeah. Atlantic yeah. coast. Yeah, so right off the Atlantic, like <laughs> life's good, brother. You're a yes. physical therapist, you've been to Australia, you've been to the Czech Republic, you're back home in France, you're sitting on the Atlantic, you, you get to play a little baseball. how the team do this year? I mean, you got, uh, I think it's 11 teams in the division this year. Exactly. And, so and yeah, in, when we say the division, just so people understand, we're talking all of France. So we're talking from uh-huh. not Monte Carlo, but there's a place outside of there and stuff like that. You got your niche, you got your nice. Montpellier down yeah. in the south of France. You got La Rochelle uh-huh. up, up there on the Atlantic coast, living in the sunshine. You got the Paris oh, oh, region. Oh, 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 in, in Normandy t- also. Yeah. In, no- in Normandy, there is a baseball ball team in third division. Yeah. So in France, there is the first division. So it's, it's, it's the highest uh, division in France. There is 11 team and they are separated in two groups. So one group is five team, other group is 16, six team. And yes, as you say, it's amazing because we are playing in kind of a small baseball country and you, you are able to get like a really good um, experience uh, t- traveling so imagine you are playing in paris uh, on during a weekend you are going to normandy you know the the the, the on very close to the beach where uh, uh, there were fight during the world war ii i thank you, you very can, much for that teo because uh-huh. exactly right just just so you understand when teo is talking about normandy that is where d-day was it's it's where the beaches were where they stormed the beaches in the world war and i'll tell you for me personally i recommend it i cannot recommend it enough whether you go to france to play baseball or you aspire to play baseball you reach out to us you want to find out how to play baseball or you just go with your family but you have to go you have to go to normandy in the north of france because 
to stand on those beaches, the US, the Canadian. Um, it's, it's chilling. It's really <laughs> chilling. So not to interrupt you there, uh, Teo, but you're right. It, it's so valuable to mix that in. I think it's a missing component. So, so Normandy is a place south of France, the West Coast. Yeah, exactly. In the south of France, you have Nice, which is very close to uh, Monaco. You yeah. know, it's a, it's a really a funny city. You have another. So on our side, we have the Atlantic coast. So in Nice, you have the Mediterranean. Yep. Mediterranean Mediterranean Sea, you have Montpellier also at the south of France, you have uh, Toulouse, you have Clermont-Ferrand, which is at the yeah. center of France uh, at, um, at a high, uh, yeah. high altitude. Yeah. Uh, you have also Metz, which is at the east, east of France, very close to Germany. So there is a big influence of German German spirit, German culture, uh, and you have three teams, four teams around Paris. You, you actually you have one yeah. team in Paris and three teams in the suburb of Paris. So yeah, in France, we can say that uh, playing baseball, you can have a lot of opportunity to travel and see yeah. different aspects of and culture of France. Absolutely, absolutely. And like Teo said at the first of the uh, episode, you know. As a young player, 10 year old, to have five coaches out there. Um, what I've always found about it is that their passion for this game is 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 crazy. It's exciting, it's electrifying, it's it's humorous in, at some points or whatever, and that because we get so caught into being regimented and just straight faced and all serious and all that over here in North America where you go over there and you, you remember they're serious, but they're out there, they're high-fiving, they're loving life, they're elbowing with the boys, they're right into it. And, and it's a different kind of a passion. It's almost a passion like we had when we were kids. And, and I love it. I, I, I love the energy of it. And I know one thing that would be a little bit disappointing to you and stuff like that, talking off air and some of the other uh, contacts that we have around there, um, the unfortunate part of the Olympics. As you know, Paris mm -hmm. has the 2024 Summer Olympics, and you knew that back in, I think, about 2014, you first heard about them getting it. And I know there was a big push with your government and everything else to have baseball. There's a couple of facilities. There's one for sure, Sennar, outside of uh, Paris. that has a beautiful field that could be a, a, a major league field and stuff like that. You unfortunately lost baseball. Uh -huh. was taken from you for 2024. I know that's got to hurt a little bit, be, be a little bit disappointed because it would have been exciting to see those types of players come through the Olympics and play. Yes, of course. You know, having a baseball Olympics in France can have a major impact on, on the baseball in France. If, if you have, I don't know, maybe the six or eight best team of the world playing at your country uh, in front uh, it just in stadium and being on national TV, we all know this can have a major impact on the sport, you know. And yeah, we we the, the federation they had a, a really a good expectation about it, and they had a good project about about it. Like uh, if we if we had the Olympic, we were supposed to have a. I think maybe another field and a great facility, like, I don't know, uh, for the Federation, like a building and a area to, to think about the future of baseball and being able to develop baseball. And of what I, what I know um, before they release the news, because, you know, there is few sports, they go in and they go out during Olympics. And... Uh, the day they they announce uh, the sport were staying at the Olympics, uh, of, of I don't know if it's rumors or if it's true or not, but they say long uh, long time before they already knew baseball was not going. So yeah, man, this this was a uh, really disappointing for all the baseball fans in France and and maybe outside of France uh, because baseball is a beautiful beautiful sport. It was in Tokyo. It's going to be in LA. So you know, it's going in, going out, going in. It's like there is no, 
no consistency in, yes. in having baseball at the Olympics. So yeah, the, that was a really sad, really sad for us because also it was going to to be a good opportunity for coach and a French player to play at the maybe the best level they will ever play because yeah. we are not professional and during Olympics the all the team there are there is a professional baseball player. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It is a sad time because I know the energy and, and the life that you put into it. And, and like you said, a lot of those old time players, like, like your boss right now in La Rochelle, uh, Pasquale, um, you know, Guillaume Cost, uh, guys that have been around the game forever and ever and ever and are so passionate about the game and do whatever they can to get, get world exposure for you and stuff like that. So yeah. Just before we wrap up, Teo, just just take the dirt bags through. What what's a week look like for you? What what would if they aspired to come over and, and play in France or whatever? What's a typical work uh, week look like? Do you have practices, double headers on the weekend? How does it look work? Okay, so yeah, good question. So uh, here in France, most of the game we play double headers on Sunday. So it's kind of weird because. A lot of foreign players who are coming uh, in France, they, they all, most of them, they, they sing the double hitter or seven inning. But in France, we play almost all of the game double hitter of nine inning. Yeah. So Sunday are, are a big day. So you're on the field at, um, yeah, 8.39. You play, you, you warm up, you get your batting practice. Uh, in field outfield, you play one game. Then there is a maybe 30 minute break, and after you go for another game. So, yeah, in general, Sunday, they're a really long day. Hopefully, we play in we are summer sports, so we play in summer. So, that's that's good. Um, yeah, in general, uh, in La Rochelle, uh, Monday, you're just for recover, rest. Yeah. On Tuesday, it's like optional practice. So players who want to, to practice on the afternoon between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m., you can go batting cage, throw a beat. You can do whatever you want. Wednesday, it's team practice. So it's a two-hour and a half practice. In general, in La Rochelle, we, um, we do a live, live BP. So yep. pitcher throwing and some of the hitters who are there, they, they're hitting against the, our pitcher. And uh, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, on the Wednesday, it's, uh, yeah, it's this. Thursday, it's optional practice, same on Tuesday. And Friday, it's also team practice from six to eight. It's two hour. And it's uh, like defense, batting practice, hitting on the cage. And maybe sometimes we do some other practice, like I don't know, 27 out, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Saturday, it's uh, when we play at home on the Saturday, we have a, a, a practice about just it's just about hitting for the hitters. It's two hours on the Saturday afternoon. And when we play away, Saturday, it's, um, it's a travel day, race day, you yeah. know. So it's kind of a, a lot of hour uh, all the week to play one day in the week, you know. So if you go to all the practice, you are going to practice on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. And you go, you're going to play on Sunday. So it's kind of, a, yeah, as you said, a, a week, a typical week. Yeah. And here, most of the guy. We are not professional, so we have a job outside of baseball. So in my case, I'm a physical therapist. Hopefully, I work for myself, so I can choose when I work and when I, uh, I don't work. But when I don't work, I don't get money, I don't get paid. <laughs> so I have to, so, you know, I, I have to manage this. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. You got to manage your time, to, your finances. Okay, I have everything. to work this to tweet and, and pay the bills, you know? That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, and again, that, it leads back to the pure passion that you have and, and other uh, French players have as well. And, and, and 
that's what's so cool about it for sure. So um, La Rochelle, like we said, it's on the ocean. So we talked off air just before we got on or whatever. And I, you were out uh, in the ocean doing some paddling already before earlier today. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So there's, there's lots of things you can do outside of baseball as well or whatever. And especially in La Rochelle or, or yep. I mean, any of your locations, any of your locations in, in France are, are cool locations. They all have their mm -hmm. own unique and beautiful experience for international players to be able to experience the game of baseball share it with the other players around the world but also have a have a tremendous experience like you said so um teo can't thank you enough for coming on can't thank you enough for sharing that story because it is a cool story and and it's cool because you wanted it and you made it happen you really did. Um, you were so dedicated, so passionate about it, so motivated to make it happen that you've experienced the world through this amazing game of baseball. Yeah, I, I, I would be able to say this to my maybe my my son, my my kids and stuff. You know, that's amazing because be, uh, thanks to baseball, because of baseball, I was able to 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 discover other country to live. Uh, life experience to play baseball at a higher level was one of my top objectives my top uh yeah that man that that's crazy and i don't know what to say but yeah this is like it's kind of mad magic yeah I, I could say magic or amazing amazing because yeah because of baseball i, I i'm the person who i am today uh i'm happy with that and i would uh i don't regret anything Thing. and if i could do it another time i would do it three if i could three times four times five times you know that's that was a or ten times because yeah that that's that's amazing that's amazing it's it's not just about the the, the sport uh the, the the sport level you know it's about also life experience uh social uh you know life yes yeah, it's, it's about life experience it's sport not only sport but all the other components of the of, of of your life absolutely absolutely couldn't say it any better dirtbags right from the mouth of tail like mesh all the way from la rochelle france right now and and you're so right life experiences through the game of baseball you've got relationships around the world now you otherwise wouldn't have had and that's yeah. that's priceless mm -hmm. so like we always say dirtbags you know you just do it don't hey if somebody is being negative in your network they're not in your network get rid of them if somebody mm -hmm. doesn't support you believe in you get rid of them get rid of yeah. them because yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. as you say if uh, I, I i would like to say uh, if you're a baseball player and you're determined on on i don't know playing overseas or getting on this team or this other team and that's that's why you want uh, go let's go give everything and you will have no regrets yeah for sure and i'll uh i'll include uh teo's uh contact himself and stuff like that your uh, instagram if that's okay mm -hmm. and yeah uh, they can reach out to teo and uh you know get a dialogue going if uh, you know if you're a parent out there and your kid's in college right now and you're watching this or whatever or a player of a young kid and you aspire to it down the road or whatever you can start that dialogue today or whatever you never know what doors are going to open for this great game um and i know some of the younger uh amateur uh uh, French teams sometimes, depending on the location, depending on the organization, sometimes they've come over to America before or whatever, or Canada and played mm -hmm. at the 12U, 13U, 14U, whatever it is. So you never know what can be done. So, um, buddy, thank you so much. Say hi to Pascal and the guys. Um, can't wait to see you again and, and stay in touch mm -hmm. with you. Dirtbags. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got a little bit of a different vision, took you on a bit of a different journey today from the other side of the world. Um, and it's all cool. So until we're back again, you know what time of the week it is. It's time to get up, get after it, and get dirty. <laughs>